Hi, welcome back to class. I'm Bill Cadwallader and thanks for joining me. So what we're going to do today, and we'll have three part videos. We'll have, a, we'll, this is part one, and we're dealing with advanced techniques to minimizing or reducing MEP or dirty electricity. So what you should have gotten this, this is in the Dropbox. It has to do, this is the student handout. So what I'll be doing is going over some of these points with you to show you how to, um, how to uh, reduce that MEP or dirty electricity. So let's go over the equipment list first. So the equipment list is a green wave meter. And if you're a student in 212 or 312, you should have gotten this for free. Green waves is very nice to send one of these out to everyone. And then the next dirty uh, MEP or dirty electricity meter is the Stetzer meter. And I would recommend that if you're doing it as a practitioner, you have both of these meters. So uh, they measure dirty electricity a little bit differently. So both of those who want to get it down uh, under 50 is what we're go uh, shooting for is the goal for non-sleeping areas and under 30 for sleeping areas. This goes up to about 150 kilohertz, gets the MEP and dirty electricity up to about 150 kilohertz. This goes up to about 10 kilohertz or uh, 10,000 kilohertz. So this is uh, 150 on the Stetzer and this is 10,000. So there's a lot, a lot of MEP or there can be above that. So please have both meters. And then uh, the other meter you need is an NFA 1000 or a Gauss meter. So whenever you plug in any filter at all, what you want to do is check the uh, magnetic fields before and then after you plug in a filter, then you want to check the magnetic fields after. After it's gone up, if it goes up significantly, you cannot use that outlet. You have to go to another outlet. So let's look at our extension cord. So I recommend a three-prong uh, grounded extension cord, and it has two outlets on one side and one outlet on the other side. I'll show you how that works. And then what I do is you can get them eight or 15 feet long. So I use some Velcro just to keep this sort of tidied up. And I use either Velcro or tape on this. You can use tape if you like, just to, so the uh, cables aren't flopping around. And then we have a outlet that uh, transforms one outlet into three outlets. So you need one of these and I'll show you how this goes together. You also need a basic circuit tester or receptacle tester. This is the one that you've seen before. It has two amber lights and a red light. So to have a good working outlet, you have to have two strong amber lights. If one of them's a little dim, there might be a problem with the ground. And this tells you what particular basic wiring you have. So you, whenever you plug in a dirty electricity filter, you have to have an outlet that's wired correctly. And also, uh, what I do is when we start to plug in filters, if in fact you don't have a supply of filters with you, more than these five, and you want the customer to order them, what I do is I go through the home and I'll stick in a filter, we'll measure, we'll get it down to where it should be, and then I put one of these dots indicating how many filters should be at that outlet. Because the most important thing is you don't want to use too many filters. You never want to use too many. You always want to use just what you need. And then let's look at the filters. So these are the basic filters. So the Stetzer filter is about $35. Then we have four green wave filters and they're all a little bit different. And this is the green wave 2500i. This is the green wave 1500g. This is the green wave 2500i three prong. And this is the green wave 2500i two prong. So what I would recommend is that you buy these. You can get all four of these for about under around $100 and then buy a Stetzer for $135. So with these five filters, you have a great chance of getting a filter that the client feels well with. And that's the most important thing in this uh, advanced techniques is you want to select the filter the client feels the best with. Also, uh, for some of the advanced techniques, you might need a power strip, and the power bar or power strip should be grounded always. And then, uh, as well as, what you want to do is just get the basic power strips. It's about $4 US, and don't get the ones with surge protectors or anything like that. It could interfere, 
So if you're going to buy some, I normally carry several of these with me when I go to filter a house. And I did want to rec I did want to say is you don't want to do the dirty electricity filtering until after you've done the magnetic, electric, and RF uh, mitigation in a home. So that's very important that you do those before electric, magnetic. Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth, commonly called RF. This is the fourth step you want to make sure you do with this. Because in those other steps, you might uh, reduce some of the dirty electricity in the house by taking steps in mitigating that. So, And then also, you might need to uh, plug a filter in, uh, more than one filter into an outlet. This has an outlet here, an outlet here, an outlet here. And then when you look at these, make sure it slants away that it slants away from this plug because sometimes a filter is too wide when you plug it in. See how it's wider than this? And so you want to make sure you have enough room that this plugs in. Not a big thing, but you can see that. And then we also have one like this. This you can get two filters in. And then this one is similar to the first one. It just has covers on it. So little covers. And then finally, um, for in case these one of these five filters does not work for your client, then there are other versions. So this is the static, and all of these are a whole, I have a whole house version of it. But these are the plug-in versions. So this is the static uh, Power Plus, and this will uh, knock down the dirty electricity on one leg. The static, uh, uh, the box, the uh, power, uh, the power box, actually is a wired in uh, wired in uh, filter and it starts at about 12 or 1300 dollars and then goes above that so the good on any of these filters for the whole house you always want to use a plug-in version to make sure the client feels well with it and we're going to be using the kitchen to do that and we'll explain that when we get to the client this is a PXDNA. This is designed to be a whole house as well. So you would need two of these. And these are about $299 a piece, so about $600 to filter a house. And then this is the RXDNA V2X. You, you would need two of these and uh, one for leg A and one for leg B. These are about $850 a piece, so they're about $1,700 for a whole home. And then finally, the sign tamers, are, all of these are great filters. Is This is the plug-in version of the sign tamer. And uh, this is about 575. So if you wanted the wired-in sign tamer, it's about $1,100, $1,150. And on the sign tamer, just a note, if it's very important, they don't come with a plug on them or they just come with leads. You wanna make sure you follow the instructions. Normally they want these leads very short because they say it loses its effectiveness the longer these wires are. So again, just refer to the manual, refer to who sold these to you. But it's very important if you do go to a whole house solution, if you need to, most of the time I can handle it just with the plug-in filters throughout the home. But if you do do that, make sure you always test the client in the kitchen with one of these plug-in uh, options. Now, this has a wired in version, the SATIC. The Sign Tamer has a wired in version. The, uh, these two from Noble Electronics and PXDNA and the RxDNA V2X. These are actually, they're actually, the whole house version is two plug-in filters that you put next to the panel. So you have to make two outlets close to the panel, to the breaker box, and you would plug in uh, both of these. These have a wired in uh, solution, both the static and the sign tamer. And whenever you get close to the panel, whenever you're doing, uh, putting in other outlets to do that, you need a licensed electrician to do that. So we're done with the equipment list. Now we're going to assemble and we'll show you how this assembles. So we're going to take the three to one. And the very first thing we're going to plug in is we're going to plug in the green wave meter. Plug that in and we plug it in on the edge on one side and then on the other side we plug in the Stetzer meter and the nice thing about this basic circuit tester is it sort of angles a little bit so this is taller this is wider than this and when you get that type it fits right in there see how that fits in and then what we do is we take this particular um, uh, plug-in 
and then we plug it in on this on this one closest to the wire so the one that has two and you plug it in there and now with the single plug here plugged into an outlet we can check the green wave meter we can check the stetzer meter and then we can check it to make sure the outlet is wired correctly with that and what happens is the nice thing about this is as you pull this away what uh, the filters will then plug right into these so we can plug in two filters so we don't have to muscle through a lot of things and just to let you know what I do with the client when I get with the client is at this point We've done the electric radiation measurement and remediation. We've done the magnetic radiation and remediation. We've done the wireless Wi-Fi and, uh, and Bluetooth, commonly called RF, measurement and remediation. So at this point in time, once I take my initial figures, then I have the clients hold these and they read the numbers to me. So that, that's what I do. And uh, they like it to see the number and then see how it reduces with the filter. So once we start to filter the whole house. So this is the end of part one. So thank you very much. We're going to head off and get to the client's house right now. Thank you.